Welcome to Sierra College Steps to Concurrent Enrollment. Steps to enroll in concurrent enrollment consist of the ones that you see listed here. So the first step is to go to the college website, which is the Sierra College website, and I'm going to click here. There we go. So here you would scroll down. This is the website. So as you can see here, Sierra, scroll down. I'm going to close that extra window. You're going to go to where it says take classes at Sierra College Academic Enrichment Program. So you're going to click that plus sign there. You're going to look through this, who was eligible, the steps that they take. How do I get started? First step is to meet with your high school counselor. That would be me. You would then apply to the college, Sierra College online, and I'm gonna show you those steps. So apply online. That's the CCC, which is the California Community Colleges application. So you would start here to where it says create an account. And again, begin creating my account. And then you would start filling in all this information that's required to apply to the California Community College. Once you get done with that, you need to continue steps. You're gonna get a, a, a number that's gonna start with like some letters. And I think it's like six characters total. So it's like three letters and three numbers. That's gonna be your CCC apply information. You wanna go ahead and write that down in a notebook that you're gonna have access to. Um, so you have that information for the future. You write your password, your login information and that CCC apply uh, number or code. Then you're gonna make sure you follow through to you so that you fill in the full information for Sierra College in particular. Um, you're gonna get a welcome letter, an email from Sierra College that's going to let the student know that they are fully enrolled at the, at the college. And you're gonna get a nine digit number, usually it begins with the number nine, um, I think always has been begun with the number nine from what I can recall. Nonetheless, that's going to be something that you should also write down because that's your Sierra College ID number. So that's something that the student is going to need to reference to often. Then you're going to go to where it says submit an academic enrichment program application form. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So see here, it says apply to the Sierra College, set up my Sierra College, so my Sierra account, and it says refer to your welcome email, so on and so forth. So go ahead and follow those steps. Again, this is here all on the website, and there's also a, a, a video that you can reference that Sierra College in particular made. And I would also su strongly suggest that families, students uh, subscribe to the Sierra College YouTube channel so that you can access this again in the future. So here's the application. We're going to go to, I'm going to start filling it in. I'm going with Strother, first name Christina. Again, I would put my Sierra College 901, whatever, 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 whatever. Um, and you're going to actually, it's not going to be whatever, you're going to actually put the correct number that has been given to the student that is taking college classes. The current school you attend, you could put Cottonwood or you could put the Cottonwood School. It doesn't matter. They know us as Cottonwood, but the Cottonwood School is our correct name. You're gonna click that you go to a public school because we are a publicly funded charter school. When do you plan on, t to, on enrolling? Is it uh, the current semester? Is it next semester? Whatever it is, you click on that. So if it's fall, let's say 2021, you would put that. Or if it's spring 2022, you would put that. But don't do it until it's actually time to enroll for that appropriate semester. So again, that's information is going to be put down. I'm going to use fall 2021. Um, let's say what class am I going to want to take? We will get into that in a moment. Let me reference back to, and hopefully I'll get back to this easily, but let me reference back to my presentation. So again, 
you've completed the, you went to the college in high school, you've done step number two, enroll at the college, you're completing the AE application. So you're, you're actually in the process of completing that, but you're going to choose your, your classes. So here's the Sierra class schedule. So I'm going to click on there. And let's say I'm looking for fall 2021. I'm going to say all campuses because I'm looking for online. And let's say I am looking for an arts class. So I'm going to search, say I want to take an art 4A, a drawing class. So I'm going to look here. I see art 4A here on the left, drawing one. I see that a lot of these classes are waitlisted because it's already close to the semester. So I'm going to go ahead and look at what's available. Um, here's a couple that are available. However, these are on campus. So if I don't want to go to the Rockland campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 11 and 12 10, I'm not going to take those. So I'm going to look for on we're going to pretend that these say that they're available. Let's say uh, Gary Graham is going to be the class I'm going to take. Let's say I did my research. I've looked up Gary Graham on my rate right, my professor which there is another video that I strongly suggest you learn how to use that and I'm choosing Gary Graham's course so it's 80135 I'm going to write that down in a notebook because I want to reference that I'm going to also write Gary Graham's um, information and I'm also noting see as you over here on the right side you can see that some of these courses are 16 weeks that's a regular semester so they're going to start 823 they're going to go to December 11th however there's this one Sandra Escobar's class that starts October 18th and it ends on December 11th that's an eight-week class that means that you are covering 16 weeks of material in only eight weeks that may be doable for some students, it's not doable for all. So do pay attention to that when you are enrolling in classes. So again, going back to that application, we said art 4A and it was drawing one is the course. So you see it says course number and course title. Uh, if let's say you wanted to take other classes, um, span one, elementary, oops, to read Spanish, and it's actually level one. Uh, you could put that down too. You can fit up to four classes, but you're, the ones that you, the first couple that you list here are going to be the ones that you're most interested in. You're going to have the parent sign this. You're going to have the student sign this, and you're going to date it the application then you're going to email it in pdf format to me so i can process it again all this information needs to be listed here because i am going to email this directly to the college so again we looked at the classes we filled out the application and let's go back to the presentation so again we talked about the rate my professor I'm um, going to show you what it looks like, but I am not going to explain it because there is a, an entire video that's dedicated to just rate my professor. So this is a website that you want to go to. It's basically a Yelp review for professors. So you look through it here. Again, check out that video. Log your five-digit class. Again, we already looked at that. Log that five-digit class with the name of the instructors or instructor and have that aside so oops i didn't mean to do that so register during your scheduled time is going to be the next step we're going to go to the next slide because this was some really important information so in a very important step that's needed in order to register for classes after setting up your sierra account and completing the first four steps that is all these up to choosing a class and your Sierra account is already established, make sure to check and sign the highlighted area in your My Sierra account. So right here, college terms and conditions. This is very important that you do that. You click on there, 
you read the information and you do what you need to do. You will not be able to register for classes without completing this step. It's gonna continually tell you that you're not able to register. So if you don't complete this very important step, you're wasting your time by applying because this is not going to go through the way you would like to so you can register for classes. So the next step, number five, register during your scheduled time. So you're going to be given a date in the student's email. And when I'm saying you, I'm referring to the student because now the student has access to college information. And also know that this college information is also it's available for the student only. So as a parent, you may want to look up your know, write down this information so you can kind of look up, you know, the classes and so forth for your student to make sure that they're keeping on top of their stuff if they're not as independent at getting these things done themselves. The email, the college email should be checked frequently. Students must check them. Uh, Lots of information is given through the emails, and that's the way that the college um, performs. If students don't check emails, they're not going to get certain information. Let's say you were waitlisted for certain classes. It's going to come to the student's email and say, hey, Christina, you are able to register for, and it's going to tell you the section code, and you're going to have, I believe it's either 24 to 48 hours to go in and register for that class. And if you don't, you're gonna be taken off that wait list and the next person's gonna go on. So again, the importance of checking your emails frequently. And again, this is the way that the college professors um, send messages to the students. And then do your best and maintain a C grade or better. We don't want students to get anything lower than a C1. It's, it's gonna have, a, it could possibly affect um, financial aid in the future. It could affect the student's ability of getting into certain schools, universities that they're interested in later, if that's a, something that they want. And we just want them to be successful. That's why I created these videos. That's why I talk about the Rate My Professor. I want students to do very well. We here at the Cottonwood School want students to do very well in college classes. There are lots of tutoring support that is available for students. So make sure to utilize that. Sierra has a lot of great uh, tutoring support services, all virtual. There are going to be some on campus I think once things start opening up more. So utilize those. If you cannot get anything better than a C, you're really struggling, it's okay to drop that class within the add drop deadline. So don't be afraid to do that. It's okay if you're not ready for college level classes. So thank you very much for listening to my video and please feel free to review it anytime you need. Be sure to review uh, their website for the steps. So Sierra's website, start the semester prior to when you want to take college classes. So for spring semester, you're going to start looking around uh, later October to early November. You're going to see once that college catalog opens up. And for if you're looking for fall, you're going to look in March and about March or April for that summer and fall catalog to open up if you want to take classes then. So you're getting a jump start on this way in advance than the actual semester. Check, check the college for the schedule you will need and write down the add drop dates and the registration dates and set reminders. Make sure that you're, you know this information. You want to be as prepared as possible to do well and be successful in all your college classes. Thank you very much for listening to this and please feel free to let me know if you have any questions.